In today's video, I have made my way all the way to the northernmost point of Denmark. Well, almost a few kilometers from it to photograph this huge sand dune we have here. So this is actually a drifting dune. So it comes from here, it drifts over here and then up over to the other side. However, the theme of today's video is that I want to give you like a checklist or uh, at least some pointers to what you should go through when you're photographing in manual mode. Now, when I look down through the comments on my videos, and from time to time, I see people feel a little bit anxious about photographing in manual. There's so many things to take into consideration. So I'll try to cover these in this video. So first things first, we of course want to move the dial here into manual. And once we are there, let's go down here and look at display. And then we have a lot of different settings. Some of the main settings that I am using, as you can see down through here is, I'm using auto focus uh, single shot, or single shot auto focus. And that's simply just so when I focus, I make sure that the camera just stays at that point. If I have it on continuous auto, auto focusing, it just keeps auto focusing on whatever. That's if you want to track some animal or something like that for some action. I don't use that and you can go in and do manual focus, but I usually always have it on single shot auto focus. The next thing you want to be aware of is your metering mode. So metering mode, in all honesty, doesn't really matter that much. I just have it as a standard on multi. You can put it on center, you can put it on entire screen average, and it's simply just how your camera meters the scene in front of you. And when it meters, it just measures the light. That's it. So it gives the histogram in your camera some information. And how we are going to do this, it doesn't matter whatsoever if you have it on entire screen average or multi. So let's just keep it on multi because that's the standard setting. So the next thing we want to take into consideration is our white balance. And if you're shooting in RAW, be sure to always shoot in RAW, not JPEG. Then the white balance is, again, not super duper necessary. I have the preference that I try to change my white balance to the preset that matches the conditions the most. So if it's cloudy, I change it to cloudy. If it's sunny, I change it to sunny. If I'm in shadow, I change it to shadow. Indoors, incandescent, light, and so forth. Many people also just prefer to have it on auto white balance and it's a little bit potato potato what you choose. When I'm shooting on days like this, as you can see, I have some moody clouds here in the background, but I also have the sun coming in and lighting up the entire scene. I just go with auto white balance. I don't expect to put different photos together where the white balance has to match or anything like that. So I just keep it on white balance and just shoot whatever. And if I want the dune to be a little bit more sandy yellow, when I come home, I just warm up the white balance in post-processing. If I want it to be a little bit colder, then I change that in post-processing. So it's not a huge deal. Right now, I'm just going to get this shot right here, and then we can talk about the next settings afterwards. So if you have watched my channel for some time, you know that I prefer to photograph an aperture priority. And I will give the reason for that later in this video. But it is important that you know how to control your camera in manual. You need to know what the different settings do. You need to be able to adjust to different conditions all the time. And that is why I'm giving you this list of things that you need to think about 
when you're photographing in manual. It can seem a little bit hard to remember everything, but it is what it is. It's photography. If it was super easy, everybody would do it. <laughs> If you so far enjoy this video, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment. It really does help the YouTube algorithm to, uh, to show this video to others. And it even helps even more if you would actually also share this video. So if there's anybody who can benefit from this video, I would highly appreciate it if you also share the video. So let's get back to some photography. So also, if you are a regular viewer of my channel, you know I am not deep into abstract photography. I'm very picky about my abstracts. But this dune is just so, so obvious for abstract photography. And I actually come by some patterns that I like because it looks very much like a tornado right here. So I have set up my camera and once I have dialed in all the settings that I've already talked about, it's time for me to focus. And how I focus is I am using back bottom focusing. So I have it right here. Back bottom focusing basically means that I have removed my focus from my shutter. So when I press my shutter, I don't focus. So I simply just make sure that I have my focus area on flexible spot L, that's large. Then I enlarge the screen with this one here, just zoom in. And then I use my focus button to focus right there in the middle. And then I simply just take the shot. So I moved a bit further into the dune and you may ask Mess, why are you not talking about settings yet? It's coming now. So I think it's important to have all that other stuff in order first before you actually start putting in the settings. One could argue that you have to put in the settings to be able to actually see the shots. Then you can focus, but for the most part I focus first and then I put in the settings and then I take the shot. But some people do it the other way around. So. Right now, I am photographing this absolutely gobsmackingly beautiful scene right here. I have the sun up here, dark clouds here in the background, and a little bit of grass up here that I use as the focal point. You can see the photo down here. Something like this is the composition. Now, at this stage, when we talk about the settings, we are actually talking about getting an optimal exposure. And to get an optimal exposure, I've already covered that in a previous video. I would link it up here somewhere. But you need to put on your histogram and you need to put on your separate stripes. You can find both of them in the menu. I'm showing that in, in the previous video. But as you can see right here, here's my composition. And I have put on my little histogram. And you can see I have my information right here. And you can see there's like some dark spots up here that is what's called separate stripes. Let me just put them out. Now you can see them even more. So separate stripes is just a warning that shows that I'm about to clip my highlights. And you can see the information in the histogram is all the way to the right, which means I'm clipping my highlights. Now, you can also see I'm on ISO 200. As a rule of thumb, you want to have as low an ISO as possible. When it comes to 
aperture. You generally want to have an aperture where you are sure that your entire scene is in focus. Now since I'm photographing all the way out at about 80 millimeter, I know that I will have to close down my aperture to have a deep depth of field, which is f16. I have made a previous video where I talk about why I usually always shoot at f16 also. And that gives me a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second right here when I'm shooting at ISO 100. And as you can see, the histogram is changing a little bit all the time, and that's because the cloud conditions are changing all the time. So sometimes the scene is brighter because the sun comes out and sometimes it is less bright. So that is why the histogram is changing all the time as you can see here. So when you're shooting in manual you will have to continuously adapt to the lighting situation to get an optimal exposure. And an optimal exposure is usually when your information is to the right but without clipping the highlights and you know you're not clipping the highlights as long as you're using your separate stripes then you can see where there's a warning. I have my separate stripes set to 100 so I know when the separate stripes is there they're just on the edge. The thing that makes photographing in manual so hard compared to photographing in auto mode or in aperture priority is that you continuously have to change or adapt to the settings or, or the lighting situation and if it's a changing day like it is today then it can be a little bit frustrating and that is the main reason why I usually tend to shoot an aperture priority because then my shutter speed just changes along with the light in the scene. It's not always optimal to photograph an aperture priority around the sea when there's a lot of sea spray and the waves crush over, then you may want to lock down and use fully manual. But generally it's about finding that balance between your ISO, aperture and shutter speed. And that's basically it. Keep the ISO down as low as possible for the most part. Make sure that your aperture is so that you have a deep depth of field, so you have everything in focus from front to back, if that's what you want. If you want to play around with the shallow depth of field, then of course you can just open up your aperture, and then you just set your shutter speed based on the lighting conditions. And that's basically it. So there's one more thing I will just uh, want to, to discuss in just a moment, but uh, here's the photo from this scene, because I've talked way too much already now. <laughs> So I gotta admit, I'm, I'm quite excited about these photos I just captured here because it looks so cool with the sand coming down and being backlit by the sun. And then I have super simple, just the grass up here. And it just before had those really dark, brooming clouds behind them. So it really lit up the sand and created that dramatic dark background. I think it looks really really well and if you want to learn even more about composition in landscape photography be sure to get my two ebooks on exactly that topic. I go through all the different compositional tools that I use to compose scenes like these. In this particular example here it was all about keeping it simple yet still having that focal point, that subject, which is just the grass. It's just a, like an anchor point that the eye can attach to. And then we have the atmosphere of the sand drifting into the scene. Very simple, almost abstract, although not entirely. So be sure to get my two ebooks. There are links down in the description. Minimal text, 
loads of photos to get to the point fast. So it's definitely not the easiest weather I've come out to photograph in and make an educational video. It's like typical me being in, in a dune on a very windy day. So I just get like sand everywhere in my eyes and nostrils and yeah, not easy. So another thing or a few other things that you want to consider uh, when you're photographing in manual also in aperture priority or, or whatever is whether you want to have image stabilization on in this case here it's called steady shot since it's so windy as it is today i'm keeping it on even though i am on a tripod and another thing is your drive mode so your drive mode is basically if you're just taking one shot if you're continuous shooting if you have a shutter delay today i'm not using shutter delay because it's so windy that the only reason why you would want to use shutter delay is simply uh, to have your camera without any vibrations from yourself so you press the shutter two second passes and then it takes a shot but today it doesn't make any sense due to all the wind then you have uh, bracketing auto exposure bracketing i'm not doing that today either i have everything well within the histogram so no reason for that either so i am actually just in single shot mode today i can handhold most of it there's so much light that i don't even need to use the tripod however in this particular scene i want to photograph this area over here and as you can see it's backlit so sometimes the wind comes up pulls some sand out and it creates a nice atmosphere it's kind of also a very like big abstract ish shot so I'm going to go over here and stand here. And then I have the plantation in the background. I have the side of the dune right here with all the sand. I think that could make for a pretty cool shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera into my intervalometer mode right here. And I'm putting it on there and by shooting time it will probably take me about a minute to get over there and a shooting interval of six seconds. In that way I have a minute to run along the dune all the way over here, stand there and then the camera will start taking a few photos with myself in the shot and hopefully it will turn out great. So here it is. Now obviously if you aren't already following me on Instagram and Twitter be sure to do so and subscribe to my newsletter because it is through my newsletter where I announce workshops and new products and yeah, all sorts of different things. So there are links to everything down in the description there.
So as I said, I'm really picky about the abstract stuff. But I gotta admit, today it is just screaming me in the face. Take the shot, man! Take the shot! So I've come past this very nice little area of the dune here with all these lines. And it's super, super simple what I'm doing. I'm simply just continuously shooting with my 24, uh, 28 to 200. And I'm just zooming in to the patterns. And that's it. Right now I'm on ISO 320 because I need a little bit faster shutter speed because I'm shooting at f16 simply just to get everything in focus. Even though I'm shooting at f16 I do have to focus stack but by shooting at f16 I only need uh, three as far as I can see shots. So if I was shooting at f11 or f8 where I could maybe get a little bit sharper photo, I would ha need even more photos. And it is just very hard today to, to focus stack because of the wind and the conditions. So I'm trying to keep the amount of focus stack photos uh, to a minimum. But yeah, here's the shot. So it has been a long day and the sun has come down. I did manage to photograph a little bit with my wide angle during sunset, but it didn't really manifest into something huge. I did get some colors in the clouds, which was pretty good. Now, throughout this entire video, you may have asked, Mess, why are you not in Antarctica? Well, uh, it so happens that I got all the way to Santiago and uh, sadly then I tested positive in the PCR tests. So uh, that meant seven days isolation and no Antarctica for me. So yeah, that was uh, two years down the drain right there. But uh, who needs Antarctica when you have Denmark? If you want to learn how I edit my photos, be sure to enroll in my huge Photoshop for landscape photographers post-processing course. Here I share all the tips and tricks and techniques I use to edit my photos. I've designed it so it's easy for beginners to get started and hopefully there is also a lot for advanced photographers, especially if you haven't really used Photoshop a whole lot before. So this course should get you started. There is a discount code down in the description to get 15% off when you enroll. If you enjoyed this video, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment and a share. I hope you learned a lot from it. Here are the final photos.